ARCA Durban provides an exclusive rehab treatment for alcoholism and drug addiction. The only rehab in South Africa that offers a medical detox treatment. We offer a superior evidence-based and medically cutting-edge approach to the treatment of addiction. If you have been frustrated by repeated failures at rehab recovery or are unaware that there are proven anti-craving medications that can significantly improve treatment outcomes, give us a confidential call to learn more about ARCA Durban's rehab program. Contact ARCA Durban on 078 24 hours or call our office number 31 and our Johannesburg number on 0622 Office number 011-656-0705. The south coast of Durban is known for its pristine coastline, beautiful blue beaches, lush forests and hidden gems. It's become the holiday destination for tourists and locals. Positioned in Scottsboro is the Blue Marlin Hotel, another fantastic destination to visit. Attentive staff with smiles all round make for a guaranteed pleasurable experience. Delicacies catered from either their a la carte or lavish buffet menus are sure to tantalize and satisfy. The accommodation boasts nothing but the best for a luxurious overnight stay and here at the Blue Marlin Hotel you are sure to receive that experience. successful woman in business means having the courage to know who you are, why you do what you do, and then applying that vision to have a positive impact on the world. A successful woman in business is confidently feminine and eager to learn and grow. She has gained balance and perspective in all aspects of her life. Sade James entrepreneur and a lady of style and grace. We get to sit with her and share her story of success right here at the Pencil Club in Amschlanga. 
Hello and you? welcome to African Essence. Thank you so much. Let's go through. Today, welcome to African Essence. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you for having me. Now, it's so exciting to have you on the show um, to see a successful woman of color right here from South Africa. You've launched your very own brand yes. and it's actually gone international as well. Yes. But before we get into the details of that, tell us about Sade, about your life before all of the success. Um, Sade has always been a busy bee, um, very progressive. I like to take on challenges, um, very into entrepreneurship. And I think that stems from my dad and the tenacity from my mom. Um, so what does Sade actually quantify to today is all of those attributes. Um, I started out in the beauty industry um, as a holistic practitioner and I thereafter studied psychology, which I um, got a degree for and uh, just received my doctorate um, in the month of October. So that's been quite an achievement. So lots of hard work, dedication, but most importantly, discipline. That's, that's what the journey has ensued. Okay, so growing up in Greenwood Park, I went to Park Hill, Greenwood Park Primary. Um, we came from a family that was, I would say, middle class. But at the same time, we were told and mentored by my father, who was an entrepreneur himself, um, to work for what you want, to be an independent woman, because I have two sisters and then myself. So my father equipped us to be independent and not to rely on a man. Um, or if you are going into a relationship, you've got to go in with something your education, mm. because should things go sour, you still have your life intact. But I can see where that independence streak comes from. And then you mentioned that you like challenges. Yes. So share with us, um, what were some of the challenges being a businesswoman, mm -hmm. um, South Africa and international, what were some of the challenges that you faced? Some of the challenges that I've faced are cultural, racial, and also gender, gender-based, you know. Um, from a cultural perspective, dealing in the UAE, being married to a Muslim guy, um, most of the, the individuals involved in the perfume industry are actually men. So there is a, I don't want to call it a rule, but it's, it's their culture, that a woman and a man are not supposed to sit in the same room. So those are the type of challenges that I came across personally that obviously impacted in the business. Um, and also you get your, your naysayers and, and people that have their own perspective on that. Um, but I believe in intention and my business is built on my reputation. So I know that I cannot compromise my personality, the way that I do things and the energy that this business is being built on. Um, so my name is very important and therefore I, I stick to my principles and my models. Um, coming, just going back to what you were talking about when you say this is obviously international where women are separated, I mean does that enforce um, what you do because you have a lot of support going into women um, projects yes. that are now in South Africa when it comes to GBV, when it comes to entrepreneurial. What are the causes um, that you are most closest to? For me, um, the, cause, the causes that are less um, enhanced or highlighted is actually the boy child, believe it or not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit a plot twist and I say this because I have a son and we are very close um, and people that know me and that are close to me know that um, my husband and I have an age gap. So in terms of him being an active dad, it's difficult and it's something that I can't expect from him and, and I'm being raw and authentic as possible. Um, and in saying that, a mom can uh, bring up a boy, but it takes a dad to bring up a man. And I'm in that phase with my son. So a lot of the, the projects that I will be involved in, I will bring in influential um, men that, that, that fit that category of being a father because there are a lot of fatherless homes, 
homes that lack leaders and um, although I'm, I back the woman empowerment up we must always respect men respect them and respect their roles because I can't get onto a soccer field and teach my son how to play soccer mm. yeah no, I agree every man I suppose has his place correct you know in society especially yeah and um, being um, part of uh, a good example yeah for men um, boys, their sons as well. Let's go back to you, AE. Tell us exa exactly what that stands for and what made you get into the fragrance industry? <laughs> um, UAE stands for United Arab Emirates. Okay. Um, we were in like the dead smack middle of lockdown where our beauticians were closed, um, they weren't able to work. Um, we had swapped over from in-person consultation um, in, in, in um, psychology, because I'm a professional psychologist, to Zoom. I had my kid homeschooling and I ha had my hubby at home safe <laughs> because he was of age or is of age. Um, so I didn't want to expose him too much. And of course we couldn't travel. So I normally travel every three months and then my stop is Dubai. I buy all my luxurious fragrances because that's one of my my things, my um, obsessions. And so I ordered them online. And when they arrived, my friends were like, and you didn't get any for us. Why were you so selfish? A typical response from family. Yes. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, what would you like? What would you like? And I thought, okay, I'm going to add up 200 bucks there, and 50 bucks there. And so it began. And coming from the beauty industry, knowing the knock uh, economically that it was taking on the ladies that I've trained, that I've worked with, that I refer clients to, um, I opened the business up to them as well. And um, it took us a simple trip to Johannesburg to land ourselves in contact with, with the local supplier but I decided to take it one step ahead because that's who I am. And I contacted um, the suppliers in Dubai. Telephonically, zoomed with them, introduced ourselves. Then they were asking for company profiles and I'm like, you know. Um, but those things, I believe, edge you forward to lay your foundation properly. So with all that being said, I secured sole distribution for most of the brands that I bring in um, to date. Mm. Yeah. Well, it sounds very exciting. A, a major door or avenue open for you. On that topic, tell us about um, you obviously import from Dubai. Yes. Tell us about the different brands that you have and what type of a client base would it actually um, appeal to? Well, um, we, we have been in business for 13 months, praise God. And uh, I'm proud to say that um, one of our niche brands are, are the Afnans, Eurosasis, um, Swiss Arabians. But the prices and the, the deals that I've struck with the suppliers are actually beneficial to the end buyer um, and also um, to the distribution or the distributors that I have involved in the business. Okay, we have 46 distributors um, nationally, so I am not growing alone. I'm growing with people, okay? And that's what I said at my launch. Um, if you, you want to work with me, I need some effort and vice versa. I will work with you, I'll give you my all. I will put the product in front of you. I will ensure that you have no competition because having no competition is a competition. So my brands are very uniquely selected. Whatever, um, whatever brands there are out there, I always go left because I want to drive that concept of individuality. Leanne must not smell like Sade. When Leanne walks into a room, I must guess what Leanne is wearing. I must not say it's an apple. I must say, what fruit is that Leanne? because that is indicative of your personality. Mm. Hence my slogan, let your scent introduce you. 
Well, it sounds very exciting. D is that the difference now? What What is the difference between just your normal fragrances and UAE? Okay, the little secret um, that the entire world actually uh, doesn't know, or it's it's been preconceived, is that the oils actually do come from the Middle East. The raw materials actually do come from the Middle East. Um, so when we look at Western fragrances, they're commercialized, you know. Um, there's, there's no mystery behind it. And for me, it carries a brand and a brand has to carry a story. And that is what, that's the difference with UAE Fine Fragrances. We take people on a journey, even when we open a store. We open a store at a bare minimum and we build as we're growing because we want to involve our clients because they ultimately have become our fragrance family where they will pop in every two weeks to see hey what do you have that's different because if i go to a local store right now and i go in three months time they've got the same fragrance on the shelf mm. at uae fine fragrances i bring in 48 24 whatever number I feel like when I'm doing that listing and when that line is done it's done so you'll be sitting maybe with one of 48 one of 24 in the country so that's where the brand is heading okay. very niche very individualistic very selected um, a lot of meaning behind it yeah so for Sade let's get back to Sade the entrepreneur because I feel like Fragrances is not going to be your only in the only industry that you're going to be tapping into. Um, what is your as a businesswoman? What is your philosophy? And and let's talk about 2022. It's it's coming to a close. Yeah. How's 2022 been for you? 2022 has been a roller coaster. It's been a beautiful, beautiful journey. It's been exhausting. It's been a, a year where I had to push personal boundaries. Um, and boundaries for the business as well because when you have a vision you can't expect everybody to share that vision with you and to understand the process at the same time um, so for me I think I've stepped into my own um, despite the negativity despite um, even the good things um, we st I've still remained humble and I'm still open to learning. I'm still open to collaborating and um, Now we've 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 set the mark and we've set the trail for 2023 So everything that I've set out I've accomplished whether I was ill whether I was distracted personally whether I was involved in studying further, because that's another aspect of me. I'm actually a nerd. When everyone's sleeping, I'm studying. Um, so yeah, we've, we've accomplished a lot. Well, congratulations, I must say. Thank you. And 2023, what is it that we have to look forward to when it comes to your brand? Our own brand. We've started manufacturing our own fragrances under the UAE brand. So not only will we be, we not only will we be carrying the best of the best of Dubai fragrances, we've um, opened up offices and a manufacturing plant in Dubai um, that we will be white labeling, and that it, that is what it's called essentially. Um, so we are now open in the market to collaborate um, with artists, different celebrities, um, companies. And we, we are doing very well, very, very well. Shada, you are also an advocate for women's rights. Um, what message do you have when it comes to gender-based violence that you can share with South Africa? It's a very serious and heavy, heavy topic. Um, lots of cases that I come across in, in my private practice. Um, so the message I would have um, simplified is talk to somebody or pick up the phone and um, ask for medi medical or professional help because often abuse starts verbally you know um, the abuser starts breaking you down breaking down your confidence your self-esteem your self-awareness 
and that ultimately affects your decision making process so you become a victim and therefore you are not able to to fight back to push back to stand for what you believe in and even your essence and your core as a woman so that would be my advice don't keep quiet about it even if it's in a casual conversation point out the abuser's flaw what makes you feel uncomfortable what belittles you what condemns you as a human being Shade, 2022 has now changed your perspective when it comes to business. Elaborate on how you adjusted. It definitely has changed my perspective. Coming from a therapeutic background, um, you are taught to be um, open, open-minded, um, free-spirited to, to an extent, um, and have no prejudice um, for anything or anyone um, and unfortunately um, from a negative perspective I've had that um, within my business what is a what is a colored woman doing with Middle Eastern fragrances or why am I dressed in a specific way and my thing has been UAE is a country not a religion number one number two um, one of the remarks that that hurt me to my soul and I say this rawly and authentically because that's who I am and anybody that knows that knows that I speak my truth so that whoever's listening can learn from it and and build up on it um, was that a colored will always be a colored we have no lineage we have no culture we are nothing so I don't work as hard as I work to prove anything to anybody but rather to prove to myself that I can do it and I'm showing the people from my race that things are possible you can go into another territory that you may not necessarily know anything about and dominate it be it woman or man Shara, I'm really sorry that you had to go through you know such um, maybe traumatic time where you found it so difficult being received, especially here in South Africa, your home country, where we're supposed to be celebrating one another, you actually experienced such, if I could use the word prejudice, you know, being with a colored black, white, it should never be that way after almost 30 years of what we fought for, to be free and to love one another equally Thank as you. each human being should one to another. So I'm hoping that going forward, you know, things will get better and increase, especially in that way for you. Thank you. Now, I don't want to keep you any longer. I do know that you're busy with your ad campaign. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, UAE Fine Fragrances has entered the second tier of our business, which means that we will not only be carrying our niche brands, um, but we will be creating our own fragrance line. So we're concentrating and we're pushing the brand from every angle and you know there is no there's no threshold for marketing and brand pushing and management um, so that's what we're about 2023 is going to be exciting um, it's going to be um, exploding with lots of information lots of education around the brand and myself included um, I've never ever be, wanted to be somebody that steps out into the spotlight. I love working behind the scenes, but I think it's important for me to align myself with the brand and push it forward because um, I have a story, you have a story, everybody has a story, now it's time to tell it. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to the sneak peek, Thank especially you. because you're going to be in the ad. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that. Thank you so much. With the spirit of the holidays and since we are a family channel, 
we bring you exciting adventures to explore this holiday. Our team took a trip to the south coast and we decided to stop by at the fascinating Croc World. Crocodiles are large reptiles found in tropical regions of Africa, Asia, the Americas and Australia. They are members of the order Crocodilia, which also includes caimans, gharials and alligators. Let's take a closer look at what Croc World offers. How's it guys? Welcome to Crockwell Conservation Centre. Um, I'm going to be taking you on the tour of our beautiful establishment. place where everyone can immerse themselves in and reconnect with nature on KwaZulu-Natal's spectacular south coast. Croc World Conservation Center is part of Crooks Brothers South Africa, who fall under the Crooks Brothers Limited Banner, a JSE registered company with over 100 years of history in farming sugarcane on the south coast and who have owned and operated the center since 1985. The centre ties in with the company's vision of preserving the natural identity of the Upper South Coast and promoting tourism. James will tell us more. My name is James Woodstock. I'm the centre manager here at Crockworld. Um, basically, Crockworld was established back in 1985. It was opened as a commercial crocodile farm where the crocs were farmed for meat and skin. In 2009, we underwent a sort of rebranding, a, re a revisioning of the park and we changed from, from, from the farming industry into conservation through tourism and education. Uh, the park has since seen a big shift in the way we do things. It's not purely focused on crocodiles. We have a large variety of birds, snakes, uh, lizards. We have five species of crocodile on site as well. And we basically just look to, to, to get more of a, a sort of widespread offering for the public. On site, we also have the, the Fish Eagle Cafe, which has got immaculate sea views and beautiful, beautiful food. Um, and yeah, it's just a, it's a nice day, a nice family day out. We've got, we sit on about six hectares of coastal, coastal dune forest. So we have quite a lot um, of nature and wild birds flying around as well. We would like to expand the park in terms of adding additional species, but our, our route that we're going is through sort of rehabilitated, yeah, non-releasable animals. So during COVID, we obviously took a big knock. We were closed for 145 days consecutively. Before that, we had only ever been closed for 35 days, and that was for the one day a year for the 35 years that we were open. Uh, we, we did manage to use that time quite wisely. We improved the park and replaced things that needed to be replaced. Uh, we expanded on our species diversity uh, so that when we reopened pr uh, after COVID, we ended up in a better position than than before COVID. So it's left us in quite a nice, a nice position going forward, a nice building block. Um, we are looking to continue to expand um, on our species variety, on areas, sort of uh, big shade gardens and nice sitting areas for people. We would encourage people to bring blankets and come and sit down. We have beautiful grass areas. Um, and it's just a, it's a nice all round area for people to come and spend the day in the sun, hopefully. If you guys are looking to find us, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Crockworld Conservation Center on Facebook and Crockworld CC on Instagram. We do also have a, web, a website. If you type in Crockworld, we should come up. Um, and we are based between Clanstill and Scottborough on the KwaZulu Natal Mid South Coast. So you can basically take the Scottborough turn off and then go all the way as if you're going into Scottborough Town, turn left, and we're on the R102 Old Main Road. Can't miss us with our signs at the entrance.
Okay, I'm Ryan Ferguson. I'm the bird curator at Crockworld Conservation Centre. At Crockworld, we have quite a large variety of bird species. Um, first of all, we've got a lot of wild bird species that visit the centre, but our captive species that we do have, most of them have come in because they've been injured. Um, so they are rescued and they cannot be released into the wild, just like our beautiful African fish eagle that we recently got in to replace our previous African fish eagle. Um, he came in because he damaged the tip of his wing um, and that had to be amputated and then has to be he cannot be released into the wild so he can't fly. So he's now an ambassador bird for his species and wildlife here at the center. Um, we do have quite a variety as in we've got lots of birds of prey. We also have cranes um, and then all the wildlife birds that come in um, they're spending a lot of time here during our summer months nesting above the trees um, in the croc pens because they're safer there than they would be anywhere else. Looking at developing our bird department, um, so what will be happening is we're going to be using birds a little bit more for educational purposes. Um, we're going to be starting a free flight bird show and this is to help expose people to birds in their free environment, so where they are able to do natural behaviour flying around. This will hopefully allow people to understand them better and want to protect them more by being in incorporated into that area with those birds. One of the things that people get an opportunity to get to see during our um, holiday periods is that we do feed some of our birds like our marabou storks and our vultures so you get an opportunity to get to see them eating and how they eat. Um, they are scavengers so it's quite interesting to watch them do that and they get a variety of different types of meats depending on what we have available at the time. So in our, in our busy period we'll feed them normally around two o'clock in the afternoon um, so that's after our uh, crocodile feed and lunchtime and then you get an opportunity to get to see our birds being fed so it's normally our marabous and our um, vultures. When you're walking around the centre you will get an opportunity to also see some of our peacocks roaming around. We do have our African fish eagle Sakuru um, which is right at the beginning part of the centre so you get an opportunity to get to see him. He may even call while you're here, get an opportunity to hear a fish eagle call. Um, we do have quite a large variety of birds of prey. We've got owls, We've got buzzards, um, we have a lot of cranes, um, so we've got the both crown crane and blue crane species and you also get an opportunity to get to see our farmyard which is part of our bird department um, and there the kids get an opportunity to get to see some goats and chickens and turkeys, that's a whole incorporated thing. So this is the, the farmyard section that we're in now. This is one of our baby guinea pigs. Um, they're breeding quite well now that we've, we've altered diets and we've done quite a lot to their, their enclosure and for their enrichment. So they, we, we basically in the farmyard we've got some free range goats, chickens, um, there's guinea pigs and rabbits and actual farm pigs. Um, and there's a jungle gym so kids can come, there's tables to eat and it's just quite a nice open open area for people to come and spend the day where parents can sit down, kids can run around um, and yeah, you can kind of expend their energy here. Uh, so we're here with the goats. Um, so basically with these goats they are, they kind of regulate their own breeding patterns um, according to size, according to if you're constantly breeding with the same bloodline. Uh, what they'll eventually start doing is they'll start only producing males. Uh, but as soon as you change out the bloodline or, or extend the enclosure or something like that, they'll produce more females so that they can actually continue to grow the herd. If, 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 if the land can't support them, then they won't produce more. Hi, my name is Wade Killian and I'm the Reptile Curator here at Crockworld Conservation Centre. 
So Croc World opened in 1985 and it opened the intentions of farming now crocodiles for the skin and meat trade. All of our crocodiles are part of the original breeding stock that were uh, sourced from Okavango Delta in Botswana. They are one of five crocodile species that we have here at the center today. So we have uh, the Nile crocodiles, which are the only species that we find out in the wild in South Africa. And then we have uh, the West African dwarf crocodile, which is a vulnerable species. Um, they are found in very densely vegetated habitats up in West Africa, where they are poached quite often for the, uh, the illegal skin and bush meat trade. Um, we also have an adult female West African slender snouted crocodile that is the most critically endangered crocodile species in Africa. There are only about 500 to 1,000 individuals estimated to be left in the wild. Um, and then we have our breeding group of American alligators uh, in pen number 8. We are currently trying to uh, establish a good breeding population uh, of them. Uh, because they aren't bred that prolifically in South Africa anymore. So we've got three females and one male. Hopefully we will actually uh, get some uh, success from that group. And then the final species that we have is our sub-adult female spectacled caiman, which you can see on display in our snake tunnel. Okay, so we feed our crocs a variety of different meat. Um, it also depends on the species. So something like a Nile crocodile, we would be able to feed quite a lot of beef, pork and uh, chicken and things like that, goat meat as well. Uh, with some of the smaller uh, species, they are more specialized because obviously a small 1.8 meter West African dwarf crocodile is never going to get the opportunity to take cattle in the wild. So they have nutrients that probably shouldn't uh, be fed to them in terribly large amounts. So we have to feed them a lot more fish, rats and things like that. Um, it's important to feed them whole foods because of all the nutri uh, nutrients that are in there. Um, it's also good for them to get the bones for calcium and things like that. All of our crocodiles are in uh, completely escape proof fencing. Um, the only crocodiles that we really worry about when working in their pens are the Nile crocodiles. So the other crocodiles, especially the dwarf crocodile and the slender snouts, there's only one per enclosure, so it's quite easy to work around them. Uh, the alligators generally don't cause any trouble. So in the wild, they feed predominantly on small mammals like raccoons, uh, freshwater turtles and things like that. They don't actually go for large mammals like the Nile crocodiles. So the Nile crocodiles, when we work in their enclosures, um, you do have to stay on your toes, especially in the breeding season when uh, the females are quite hormonal. So they tend to chase all other animals around, inclu including some of their uh, enclosure mates. So yeah. I've been working with snakes and other reptiles like lizards and things like that for um, a lot longer than I've been working with crocodiles. I've been working for croc with crocodiles for approximately two years. Um, I basically got my first snake just shy of my sixth birthday and I've been interested in reptiles ever since. Here in South Africa there is only one species of crocodile and that's the Nile crocodile. Um, they are listed as a least concerned species because they are one of the most widespread species uh, throughout the world and they're definitely the most widespread species and most common that is found in Africa. Um, some of the other species like the uh, the West African Dwarf Crocodile and the West African Slender Snouted Crocodile are persecuted uh, in relatively high numbers. Um, habitat loss is a problem that's facing most animals. So the deforestation that happens in all these tropical uh, rainforests and things like that in Africa does play a role. Obviously the reduction of population means there's less space for them to actually source the resources that they need to survive and um, it's just a lot more space that was needed to sustain the entire population of that species. So the West African Dwarf Crocodile and the West African Slender Snouted Crocodile are endangered because of habitat loss, poaching for the skin and bushmeat trade. So we're very fortunate here at Crocworld to have the oldest living Nile crocodile on the planet. Um, his name is Henry. He was caught in 1903 at the estimated age of around three years old. Um, we are celebrating his 122nd birthday on the 16th of December this year. Obviously being a wild caught animal, there's no way we can actually verify his exact birth date, but based on historical records, we've given quite a moderate estimate that he was around three years old at the time of capture. Um, so he is probably one of the largest Nile crocodiles on record at the moment. And there was a crocodile that lived to 140 years old, but that died in 2010. So as of today, Henry is the oldest living crocodile in captivity. Some of the interesting uh, facts about crocodiles are that they can hold their breath for over an hour, sometimes just up to two hours um, at a time. And they do that by slowing their heart rate down to just a couple of beats per minute. They also um, cut off the oxygen supply to their peripheral limbs and most of the oxygen gets used for their vital organs. Um, they have the strongest bite force of any anim animal in the animal kingdom, which is over a ton per square centimeter. They are cold-blooded animals which can go for up to six months at a time without feeding. They can smell prey for, well, they, in times of low food, <laughs> in times of low food availability, they will resort to scavenging. They can smell rotting carcasses from about six and a half kilometers away. Uh, they evolved approximately 90 million years ago in the Cretaceous period. That's the same time period that saw the extinction of most of our dinosaurs. 
Okay, so in the upcoming holiday season, uh, from Monday to Sunday, we're gonna have uh, two daily croc feeds at 11 and 3 p.m. At 10 o'clock, we're gonna alternate between a snake demo and a snake interaction, where you guys will actually get to um, get hands-on up close and personal with Monty, our albino Burmese python, or one of the other um, friendly species that we have here. Uh, there is also the Fish Eagle Cafe, where you guys can have lunch on site. We've got 180 degree sea views. This is one of the prime birding destinations on the mid-south coast. Um, we do have a lot of uh, sought after species like green twin spots, uh, the palm nut vultures, so it is quite a hot spot for birding activity in the area. So these are our leopard tortoises. We're in the leopard tortoise enclosure currently. So all of the tortoises that we have here were brought to us, they rescued, people have picked them up on roads and things like that. Uh, this one is Brian, he's the most relaxed tortoise I think I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, we basically, we have about 13 tortoises in here, uh, ranging, ranging in size from sort of his size to some of the smaller sort of medium sized leopard tortoises. Uh, the leopard tortoises are the most widespread of all the tortoise species and they're also the biggest um, in South Africa, which is quite nice. And it's, it's really nice seeing, the, uh, seeing them get this sort of relaxed around people because often they do stress and they'll pull their heads back into their shell. Um, but as you can see, he's, he's not too stressed at all. This is our raptor wing here. We've got four, four new raptor enclosures, which we put up over the last sort of year and a half, two years. Um, we've got booted eagles here, jackal buzzards, Harris hawk uh, Eura and Eurasian eagle owl. So you can actually see the female Eurasian eagle owl sitting over here. She's mock nesting. Uh, for some reason every year she, she digs a little hole in the corner and creates a little nest. We have built her a nesting platform, uh, but she's not such a fan of it for some reason. These are our pair of cape vultures. Both of them are missing a wing, so obviously they're not releasable back into the wild. Uh, we are hoping to get involved in vulture breeding projects where we can get these guys breeding and hopefully re-release babies back into the wild from them. Um, but it's quite, it's quite interesting the, the personality that vultures have. I've never seen it in, in really any other birds. They've got an incredible personality. We actually go in and play tug of war with meat and uh, carcasses and things like that, and it's, it's awesome to work with them. So this is our West African slender snouted crocodile. It's a female. Um, these guys are critically endangered. They, it's believed that there's less than a thousand left in the wild. Um, we've unfortunately only got a female. We don't have a male um, at, our, at our disposal, but we would like to start getting a breeding project going with them um, at some point in the future. Stroll through our beautifully landscaped gardens which is home to a variety of indigenous and endemic vegetation. Bring your family to meet our lovely animals and enjoy a delectable meal at our Fish Eagle Cafe. Our team decided to take a closer look at the menu. Hi, my name is Lundile. Um, we are here at Crockhold. Today I'm going to prepare you a burger. It's called basil pesto burger. It's actually a gourmet burger. So let me start. We first start with our 200 gram meat and we dunk it into the oil like for two seconds and here we put our um, spices turn it over Put spices once again and now we're going back here and we are going to mix um, our onion with a little bit of sugar not too much and also two teaspoons of 
पार्ट्स है एंड सुर फायर एंड मिस्टर not for too long we can just leave it there we going to work here this is our garnish uh it's just lettuce tomato onion and our bacon we put it here on the burger and this is our onion ring we put it here this is flour This is egg and go back to the flour again. From here we are going to the oil. So it's up to you whether you want it with chips or salad. It's just up to you. This is our paste and sauce. Going to put it It actually brings a uh, flavor into it. Turn it over, okay? So, it's up to the customer whether they want it medium, medium rare or well done. But most of the time customers want it um uh, medium rare or just rare. So, yeah. I have been working here I think like for 2 years. This is my second year actually. I actually started here as a chef. Not like a chef a chef. I started as a, a scullery and then from there to here. It's actually my first time as a chef in here. I've learned everything here. So many bakers, especially gourmet bakers. We have a smoky cheddar. Uh we have uh this one we're making basil pesto. We have our sweet chili burger. We have our bilton burger, uh, which is very nice with sweet chili on top. We also have our Thai curry. It's a crocodile curry with uh, white sauce inside, with uh, carrots, with um, spinach inside, uh, and it's very nice. This is well done now. Um, we are almost done with our gourmet burger. So we are plating now. This is my 200 gram medium to well done. Gonna put it here and this is our basil pesto. We're gonna put it on top of it. And one last thing. This was our onion from Elia mixed with sugar and butter. So this is it. We closing. Chips. Bon appétit.
a person's fragrance says a lot about their character, and spritzing yourself with a delightful niche fragrance has become a luxury of self-expression. Entrepreneur Shade James, no doubt a fashionista, a lady of style and grace, knows that your fragrance should say a lot about you. She has carefully selected UAE's finest perfumes, making it available right here in South Africa. There is certainly a fragrance within her wide selection to match your character and suit any occasion. Whether you are a fan of the fruity, orientals, florals, aquatics, gourmand and more, at UAE Fragrances you will have it all the most luxurious brands available. Let your scent introduce you.